After the financial crisis, there was a realization that banking concentration can be detrimental, both in terms of systemic risk, but also competition. Since then, efforts to increase competition have amounted to a number of regulatory initiatives, the most recent of which is referred as Open Banking in the UK, or also known as Payment Service Directive 2, or PSD2 in short, for Europe. Open banking can be defined as a model in which banking data is shared between two or more unaffiliated parties to deliver enhanced capabilities to the marketplace. Open banking is a secure way to have more control over what matters to you. Obviously there is money, but it is also your financial data. The combination of these two elements give clients that are opting out an access for more personalized services. For businesses, this is a great opportunity to offer different and innovative services, such as money management, price comparison tools, etc. From a banking side, before open banking and the rise of fintech, most banks did not extract any real value from the expensive customer data that they held. However, new fintech technology players can use their data and analytics capabilities and innovative approaches to iteratively improve their personalized recommendation engine and customer experience as they access more and more data about individuals. So in practice, which areas can open banking companies target and add value? You can think of three directions. Firstly, there are aggregation services, which simply access and display your financial data from multiple providers, offering greater convenience and efficiency. This is a relatively low impact. An example of this is London-based company Sync. Secondly, budgeting and debt management services can help you analyze your financial data, and this is considered a media impact example. An example of this would be startup Tuli. Finally, high impact services such as debt advisors, product comparison services, and those offering personalized recommendation using data to offer new higher value product or services, which you could most likely not have implemented by yourself. An example of this is Clio. In order for open banking to realize its potential, the reliance on APIs is a critical factor in order to expose to third party various data sets held by banks. Not every third party can have access to your financial information. Indeed, PSD2 has identified two types of third party providers. You have Account Information Service Provider, AISP, and Payment Initiation Service Provider, PISP. Let's look at them in terms. An AISP is a business that uses customer account data to provide services such as aggregating financial information in one place, tracking their spending, or planning their finance. AISP are currently the most common, and UK-based startup Yolt is a good example. A PISP is a company that initiates a digital payment on the behalf of a user directly from their bank account, offering an alternative to use of cards. A number of PISP, such as Trustly and GoCardless, are focusing on e-commerce payment. As you might realize, both PISP and IISP are changing customer relationships and also business models. Traditionally, the value chain was strictly vertical. This is usually referred as a pipeline business model. Banks offered their customer a variety of services and products. In exchange, customers paid a fee and authorized banks to access their personal and transactional data. However, with open banking, value can now be created outside of traditional bank, allowing third parties to own primary customer relationship. To understand what's the different form of relationship and how they arise, we must introduce an important concept, platform business model. Before formally defining a platform, all of you have already incurred it without realizing it. Think of a shopping mall. Inherently, it's a physical platform that facilitates the interaction between customers in a variety of large outlets and stores. Therefore, platforms create value to the matching of two or more customer groups and either curates or owns the product and services being sold. Platforms can have a different business model depending on the method of interaction of users or transaction with products. Platform economy and open banking are technically two distinct phenomena, even though they share a lot. Whilst platform strategies are currently more linked to tech companies in Asia, open banking is very much related to financial services in Europe. However, open banking best practices and API will surely have a global impact on the numbers of industries.